Yeah, way back here, I'd say those were wolf tracks. Hey guys, thanks for checking out another video with Angel and I. Um, we are going to actually do two things here. Um, right now we're picking a goldenrod. Um, we're actually going to make a tincture out of it, and then we're also going to use the leaves to make tea. Uh, so we are, what is it, it's the middle of September right now. So everything's just starting to turn. Hey, what kind of tree is that in front of us? Is that an apple tree? It's a plum tree. Oh. You could pick plums. What do we got? Is that a wild plum tree? I better taste it. No, that's know. like a, that's an apple tree. What? Yeah, those are apples. No. Yeah. How come it's out in the middle of nowhere? It's definitely an apple. Look at them all. Those are small to be apples. These, aren't these like crab apples or something? That's not a regular apple. No. They're really sour. It's definitely mm. an apple though. What kind of apple is this, guys? Look at this. Crab apple? Yeah, I think it's crab apple. So, right, totally random fine, I swear. Um, so we're, we're out on state land just... Um, Picking the golden rod again, we're gonna make tea out of it, gonna make a tincture out of it. Uh, the tea, the cool thing about the tea is it's actually um, has seven times more um, antioxidants in it than green tea. So I actually drink quite a bit of green tea. So this will be a nice change to break that up for sure. Um, so as far as the tincture itself, so what it's known for is a diuretic. So it's really, really good for like urinary tract infections, um, any like kidney stones, kidney issues. Um, it's also an in, uh, anti-inflammatory, so it also is supposed to uh, helping with gout or even uh, to help with flu or colds to kind of loosen up the gunk and all that stuff. So I don't know about any about anything about that, but mostly it is uh, for urinary tract infections, helping the kidneys, kidney stones. Um, I don't have gout or anything like that, but hey, I really want the leaves for the tea is what I'm after here. So, but while we're doing it, we're gonna make a tincture. So with the actual tincture, it does need to go, and what we will do is actually put it in a glass mason jar. Uh, we'll fill that glass mason jar up uh, with either 80 or um, 100 proof vodka. Okay, you need that high alcohol content to make sure it doesn't start rotting on you or going bad on you. And we leave it um, with the flowers, we leave it in that mixture uh, for about six weeks or so, give or take. And then what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and strain it out. Okay, we can, and a lot of times what I'll do with tinctures is I'll actually just use a coffee filter and I'll strain uh, the flowers through the coffee filter. And then it just gets all the, the bugs and the nasties. I mean, some people wash this stuff too. Um, they'll run it through the, the kitchen sink, get it all washed up, put it in there. Um, well, we're just gonna do it the natural way. Look at this. What? Look at that. Antique. Ah, who does that? I know. It's that's a Macintosh 5200 75LC. Shame on somebody who for throwing the kill. So, again, we're way out in state land in the middle of the woods, middle of nowhere here, um, down a logging road. So, and that's a good point, too, is you don't want to be harvesting this stuff next to a tar road where they're um, plowing and spraying chemicals and, and weed killer and all that crap. So you want to make sure that that you're doing it somewhere where where it's more natural um so to show you how this is done let's grab one from start to finish and show us how to cut it a good one. um yeah it's end of season so getting, we waited a little too late we did wait late we meant to do this about two weeks ago yeah it would have been perfect two weeks ago so perfect here's time. a good one i mean there's some good ones they're still nice and bright flowery. There's not a lot of flowers left on the top. Ah, look at the stem is horrible. I know. We waited a little too long. I know. Long. Slim pickings. Um, well, let's just do a small one. All right. We'll do a small one. No, we'll one, have to do small this ones. This one definitely doesn't have a good base. No. So the first thing you do is you want to pick off the nasty leaves. Okay. Because the leaves we're going to want to dry out. <laughs> which our, is quite a few of them isn't it yeah we have a dehydrator we'll dry the leaves out and then we'll mix that in with tea so we're cutting the flower head off at the base and then we're just stripping all the leaves so we're going to keep harvesting here um i'll be back in a sec
So we're searching around for another patch that's a little fresher. Um, so I, uh, with these goldenrod too, is um, they're good as an allergen. So uh, from the studying that I've done on this, a lot of people think that goldenrod is part of the problem of, of why they have allergies, but it's actually ragweed that is growing and blooming at the same time as goldenrod. So goldenrod is actually a really late bloomer. You know, we're, we're at the, oh, we're actually into fall now. So as you can see, the colors on the trees are changing, the leaves are changing, some of the maples are turning red. So it's the, like the latest blooming flower, um, one of the latest blooming flowers out there. So it does help with the allergies. Um, again, it blooms the same time um, as ragweed. So that's not the issue. So if you're taking this tincture, um, around that same time or drinking your tea around the same time as as um, the ragweed is coming out you know that definitely helps to, to fight that off as well and there I think there's a total of about uh, 12 different varieties of goldenrod um, they all essentially do taste about the same so you're not going to really taste much of a difference um, from variety to variety but let's watch another one we'll watch us strip this one down Bugs have been eating leaves on there. Bugs. Yeah, the nice time about collecting it right now is the, the mosquitoes and deer flies are really limited. Oh, yeah. So the other thing that I noticed about this, too, is um, when you are tincturing, um, picking this stuff, you do not uh, need to be a tree hugger. You do not need to be a hippie. Okay, you do not need to be a horticulturalist. Average dorks like us can do this, too. A lot of people like to ask for permission from the plant first. Why do they ask permission from the plant first? Do I don't you know? know. I don't either. That I'm not sure of. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is actually considered a, a weed. In a, and, and this stuff grows in pretty much every state in the United States. Probably in almost every country. I don't know. I know it grows everywhere in the U.S. So it's definitely not a, a, a lack Rare. of it. Yeah, it's not it's a not, rare species. No, it's not endangered. The, the the bees love it, so we'll see a lot of honeybees around this. A lot of wasps too. Um, but definitely a pollinator, it seems. Yeah, and you're not going to over harvest this. No, just... right. There's just so much of it. I mean, everywhere. If you actually start paying attention and looking for this stuff, you see it everywhere in the ditches. I mean, even randomly in the woods, like here, little fields are full of it. It's a weed. Yeah, and we're not taking the roots, so no. the plant is just fine. There's not much flower on this one. Yeah. Wish I had it separated, but... So when you do have it tinctured, um, when you do have it, and we'll, we'll show you that in a minute here, when you do have it in the, that glass jar, you are going to want to shake that up. Um, you know, like once a day, give it a good vigorous or even every other day, just shake the heck out of it. Cause what the alcohol is really doing is it's, um, stripping the desirable parts off of, uh, the plant or the flowers itself. I kind of think it of as like Dawn detergent, Dawn dish soap, where you put a couple drops of Dawn dish soap into your greasy water and it just kind of gets the grease off your, your pots and pans and gets it moved around well alcohol kind of does the same thing it's just a way to to kind of flush um the good parts off of the plant to separate it uh from the plant so yeah the main thing to note here is i am not a doctor never been a doctor i am not a scientist i'm not a horticulturalist i am just the average schmo joe doing this for fun so don't take my advice totally to heart without doing some of your own research and if you are taking other medication i know sometimes tinctures um, and supplements can um, create issues with your medication and a lot of times this is actually used um, in conjunction uh, with prescribed uh, pharmaceuticals so keep that in mind too see the flower is good on this one but the rest of it's shot yeah yeah so we're actually getting our tincture ready in the woods since we're out out here we're kind of going out of natural so we're not actually washing these so there might be a little bit of bug juice in there by the time you're done no no big deal um, once you get this filled up with the flowers um, then we'll go ahead and fill it up with the vodka either the 80 or 100 proof vodka you don't want to go lower than the 80 proof from what i am gathering as um, you, you don't want anything to rot on you here so really you're just trying to 
keep it in there keeping it in a solid state uh, for that that four to six closer to six weeks I suppose making sure to give it a good shake once a day or once every other day give it a good shake for about a minute just to keep make sure everything stays saturated uh, once this is done in that four to six week range uh, then what we'll actually do is pour this out and strain it and, and I use like a coffee filter so it gives a nice heavy strain then by the time the liquid is out um, there's nothing in it your bug parts aren't in there um, which there aren't very many of um, but yeah you just want to make sure and keep those flowers kind of loose in there you don't want to pack them down uh, and then once that's done once you're done fermenting it um, once you're done decanting it or, or uh, putting it through that coffee filter uh, then what we do is want to hand me that tincture container so then what we do is we'll put a funnel on these and we'll fill these up with the actual tincture itself um, and each one of these tinctures it does have a little dropper so to to for best results um, you can take a couple of drops two three drops um, maybe three times a day throughout the day for up to the two weeks and at the end of the two weeks just give it some time off and then uh, maybe a two weeks off and then maybe two weeks back on again so that's really how this works so once we get done doing this we're gonna head home um, we're going to take the leaves we're gonna put them in our dehydrator and then get them ready to make tea um, and then rinse and repeat all right so there's our cheap generic vodka we'll go ahead and fill it all the way to the top making sure everything's covered put the lid on and then we'll give it a good shake for about a minute just to make sure everything gets good and saturated just like that nothing crazy and then we'll even maybe put some more we'll top that vodka all the way up to the top all right so we're going to head home um we're going to dehydrate the leaves um so yeah thanks for checking out another video with us we are going to do some tincturing of some rose hips too which has to be done after the frost and it's been recently frosted here uh so yeah so hit subscribe if you're not already subscribed if you like checking out this kind of stuff we're always in the northern 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 most part of minnesota northeastern part of minnesota so we'll see you guys in the next one